Hi everyone. Let's admire the beautifulness of a custard apple tree. It's that time of year in warm temperate zone. <laughs> I want to say the southern hemisphere because uh, this is the we're heading towards late summer. The custard apple tree, they would have blossom and uh, most of the fruit would be pollinated by now. There are still some flowers that we have left. That there is a female flower. Uh, and the one behind that, that one there might be a male flower. Might be, it is. <laughs> Here we go. Let me just show you. See how it has all that pollen there? And look at the custard apple. And over there. I just love the custard apple smell. The foliage, I mean. <laughs> It's a gorgeous fruit. So if you ever watch my video about custard apple, I don't promote pollination, like hand pollination. Look at this, that's another female flower. But certainly, I mean, I've done a video a long, long time ago. <laughs> and since then, I haven't done any more like hand pollination because I don't think it needs it and from the years of growing custard apple I'm no expert by any way by any means I'm no expert I just think like when the tree is ready it will produce fruit and it knows how much you need to produce you can assist it by minimizing the fruit but you know, if you're trying to force it to have too many, uh, the quality of the fruit won't be good. It's another female flower. Could be a male, but at this stage, not quite sure. The only fertilizers we use is sheep fertilizers, sheep manure, and seaweed. Mostly liquid, like seaweed fertilizers. Look at that. So green and lush. And when you walk through it. This tree doesn't have much fruit. But sometimes, you know, I can be quite surprised because towards like mid-season, when they get a bit bigger, I start to see a lot more fruit. Now I pruned it back in the winter months. Was it? Yeah, just right after the custard apple season, really. And I can see that the tree trunk is a little bit bigger. I'm more concerned about the the tree than the actual fruit. Here is tree. Some of them are doing very well. Look at that tiny little baby. Right there. Out of all the custard apple variety, I like the Vietnamese sugar, sugar baby, sugar apple, sugar custard apple. The one in Vietnam, it smells amazing. It tastes nice, but it has a lot of seed.
I have one of that tree here, but it struggle a lot in this climate. It needs to be in a hotter, more humid place because I've been growing it for years and it hasn't really done much. Eventually, I will be a full-time gardener. <laughs> the constant gardener. Not like the movie, The Constant Gardener. That was a very sad movie to watch. And in somewhat, it's relevant to this time. It's relevant to all time, really. You know, people can do bad things with drugs. <laughs> I'm not talking about party drugs, just any drug. Let's go down here. Look, the spider is making art for us. <laughs> Everything has its place in the world, in, in life. Ooh. I think another two to three years, this place will be like all of this custard apple. Provided it survives and nothing major happen, it will be epic. Like the trunk will be as big or bigger than that pole there. Okay. Whoops. Nearly tripped and fell on my face. And sometimes it's a good idea to prune uh, it more aggressively in the center just so that the sun can penetrate and it can give different uh, part of the tree the opportunity to uh, use the sunlight to, for the process of photosynthesis. So the fruit will taste much better. If you notice, I mean, I notice certainly, like the fruit that are grown, like with a lot of sun, sun, sunshine, it has more flavor. It tastes better than, you know, artificial fertilizers. Oh, look. They're just so cute. They're cute little babies. So out here, the wind <laughs> so that shit in contrast you can see that the flowers very different isn't that this is the Praxton Praxton custard apple the intensity of the Sun this is what it does if we were if we weren't protecting it like the other custard apple same as here. Look how small the flowers are. The foliage is really small as well. It's very intense. This is the one similar to the, the tree. This is a seedling from the tree at my parents' place. This one is doing a little bit better. But as you can see the leaves is like a lot smaller. It's trying to reduce like the amount of sunlight it's exposed to. Oh, 
Oh look, one fruit. <laughs> I pruned these trees back quite heavily last year. This one is doing a little bit better under the Moringa tree. Well, not really under, but close to. See how it got a bit more shade and the foliage is a lot bigger. But when it exposed to full sun, it's a lot smaller just like the other uh, branches on the other tree. So this is the only tree that has mixed fruit. Uh, taste between uh, the African pry and the sour salt. And I can see it right now as I am looking at it. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna come a bit closer. Can you see there? That will taste a little bit like a salsa. And if bit strange if you if you don't if you're used to the African pry or the Praxton this is the other shade house and we have about six custard apple over here Look at this. Wow. Fruits. <laughs> and look at this tiny little one that's been pollinated. Oh, they're so cute. The trees in here didn't have a lot of fruit last year, but they were solid fruit. So it really comes down to the quality, not the quantity. And it doesn't matter how many years you live, how long you live, how long the tree live, and how many fruit it has, but if that quality of life or the quality of the fruit is crap, it's really isn't worth anything right well it's worth something but not much you can learn a lot about life through gardening and just observation with trees And I think the more spiritual you become, the more of a gardener you like to be and you want to live that peaceful life away from people. Well, not a lot of people, not all people, but you want to have that peace and quietness. Look at that long female flower. And over there, it's a fruit. It's coming along. Wow, look at over here. The fruit is even bigger. big one in there and the one behind that mm. 
Oh my goodness. So it an exciting time when it's fruit. <laughs> Look at that one. So the ones in here are doing very well in the first shade house. I never get bored looking at this. I think these are the main one. I, I still got another one, but that's okay. Well, my hope is once the border open, uh, really, I want to go back to Vietnam. Uh, I hope the Vietnamese government opened the border as well. Because, you know, I, I feel like my uh, granddad is on his way out. He's 94. He lived a relatively good life. And uh, I would like to be able to go back to Vietnam and visit my family. Yeah. <laughs> and eventually I said to my parents, you know, once they're, they are old, but I would like to set up a place that they can retire in Vietnam. If you can have the right proper setup, if you look into aged care and... Um, there is a documentary about retirement in Chiang Mai, in Thailand, and how you have one-on-one -on -one carers and they offer similar health um, healthcare as you know the Western countries. That would do so much better for your parent than leaving them in a nursing home. So I know in Australia there's a, there are a lot of issues with nursing home these days and the horror of you know leaving your parent in one. So I can totally see myself living in Vietnam for parts of the year. Eventually I'll get there and I'll set up my own permaculture place. Maybe in Vietnam. <laughs> That will be fun. That's something to look forward to.